Welcome to this week's seminar presentation on Mixed Methods Research. I would like to call this presentation, Numbers May Not Lie, But Neither Do They Tell the Complete Story. I will be covering the Hess Bieber text, chapters 10 through 12. Mixed Methods Research represents a comprehensive picture, a synergistic picture where the whole is greater than the sum of its parts. Mixed method uses both qualitative and quantitative approaches concurrently in one study or sequentially in two or more studies. Mixed methods are typically linked to the research question because some methods answer certain questions more effectively. Qualitative research allows the researcher to ask questions and dig deeper, while quantitative allows the testing of how much or how many. Our text divides, discusses five reasons why researchers might want to use mixed methods. First is triangulation, or it uses more than one method to study the same research question. This could be methods triangulation, theoretical triangulation by using different theoretical perspectives, or data triangulation, or using de different data sources. Complementarity is another reason to use mixed methods to gain a better understanding of the problem or to clarify results. Development is the third reason mixed methods is advantageous because results help develop and inform the methods. Initiation is when research study findings raise questions or contain contradictions which need clarification. And the last advantage is expansion. It expands, of course, the breadth and range of the study. The text also lists several disadvantages. First, mixed method mixes philosophical paradigms or ways of knowing. This includes a mixing of objective and subjective assumptions. Because quantitative methods are part of a positivist paragraph that posits a singular social reality. On the other hand, a qualitative method often draws on the interpretive paradigm, which posits social realities of multiple truths. Researchers known as purists may have difficulty mixing methods. Pragmatists consider the research question more important than either method. What is a mixed method research design? Decisions have to be made regarding timing, which means which component comes first, and prioritizing, which means which component is dominant. In 1998, David Morgan noted that how the researchers answered the questions of timing and prioritizing will provide four possible mixed methods designs. First is qualitative quantitative. The qualitative component of the project is first, but secondary to the project's goals. Next is quantitative qualitative. Quantitative study is secondary and qualitative study is a primary consideration. Next, the qualitative research begins and is followed by a smaller quantitative study. And finally, quantitative study is primary and is conducted before the qualitative study. What drives the qualitative approach to mixed methods inquiry? First, it commits to multiple views of social reality. It gives the expertise in meaning, enhances the generalizability of findings, and tackles difficult issues, access prior knowledge, and gives a broader perspective. And now for the steps to a quali 
qualitative mixed methods project. First, determine the research question. What are the objectives? What is the research question? And what does the literature reveal? Which of the designs will be used? What is appropriate to your research question? Be open to a reconfiguration based on results. How you you prioritize your methods. The third step is to consider ethical issues. Identifying ethical issues stemming from the research question. Be sure the data is ethically obtained. The fourth step is identify data to be collected. Are ethical guidelines of IRB followed? What is the target population? Does the sample reflect the nuances of the research question? Can data be linked between the two methods? And how will data collection be affected by the methods being used? The fifth step is to identify the type of analysis to be conducted. Will the analysis be interpretive and synthesized or conducted separately? Be sure to validate both qualitative and quantitative components. The sixth and final step is interpretation and write-up. Will your findings be integrated or separated? How will you present both methods equally, or is that even relevant to your study? And now we will look at Chapter 11, Analysis and Interpretation of Qualitative Data. There is no right or wrong formula to follow, and one must appreciate the analysis through their interpretation. Step one is data preparation. Transcription of data requires decisions about what to transcribe and use and formatting. Appreciate the match between the data used and the research questions. Appreciate the subjectivity which often accompanies data transcription. Step two is data exploration. The key word here is that the data should be approached with an exploratory presentation. It's about making meaning. How does your data relate metaphorically? How does your data compare or contrast with each other? In concert with your exploration should be the writing of memos. This allows you to look at the data from a more analytical approach to identify ideas, descriptions, diagrams, and make or make notes of them. Look for problems are distinctive differences in the data. Step three, specification and reduction of data. During this phase, the researcher can reflect on the data and identify how certain categories of data are connected to the process. Let's talk about patterns in coding. The process of coding will assist in recognizing patterns. There are three types of coding. Descriptive codes are the labeling or tagging of a participant's words. Categorical codes is grouping data into more, a more generalized state. And analytical codes is a combination of the first two codes to further add depth and breadth of meaning. The author offers a few coding techniques which might be useful. Review the research purpose and problem. Become familiar with the data. Identify word strings or specific text you are drawn to. And circle any words or phrases which may help you to understand and connect with your data. How to code data. Grounded theory is a te technique of line-by-line -line coding where the researcher develops categories as they are reading. Some codes will be literal or can be sent in the text so that they are descriptive and some codes are ba 
codes are based on interpretation. Focus coding, which builds and clarifies concepts during which the researcher moves to a broader interpretation of their data. Internal self-assessment moves into a more conceptual type of coding, and this will reveal certain analytical dimensions and or subcodes. Step four is interpretation. Interpretation is a fluid process. Establishes validity and reliability through interpretation, consistency, and ethical procedures, identification of any negative cases, ask other researchers in your field to review your work, and look for the impact of the study on those who participated. Software. Though technology can help with data, particularly large amounts of data, one must be careful about how the data is entered. There is a generic software which is not specifically designed for qualitative research. This type of tool must be approached with care because one's relationship with the data might be blurred. Then there are those types of software that are specific, specifically made for qualitative analysis. There are four types. First is code and retrieve programs, which assign codes to text. Next is code-based code theory programs, which allow researchers to analyze relationships between the data, codes, and code categories. Conceptual network building programs and textual mapping software allows for linking various aspects of the code categories. The conclusion of this chapter presents with a list of questions for consideration. First, overall research question, is it clearly stated? Does the data fit the research question? Is the method compatible with the research question? How are you going to choose your participants? How did you arrive at your findings? Can the reader gather meaning from your data and its findings? How will the reader assess the credibility of your findings? And finally, does your conclusion reflect your findings? And now for Chapter 12, Writing with and Representation of Qualitative Research Projects. There is a nice table or visual on page 342 of the Hess Beaver text, which explains the standard model for the write-up template. First, we will have the title page, an abstract. Know what formatting is required specific to where you are going to present your research. The abstract should provide the overall objectives and give a bird's eye view of what is to come. Keywords are important because it will help the searchability of your study. The abstract should be 150 to 200 words. Next is the introduction. This is where you will introduce your research topic. You will talk about the purpose of the research, the significance of the research, and your guiding research questions. The literature review informs reader of the researcher's knowledge. It critically evaluates the relevant issues, synthesizes the various sources of prior research, and notes the significance of the study being presented by identifying research gaps. The fifth part of your write-up is the research design. This introduces your approach to the research question. It describes the sampling procedures, details the data identification process, and assures readers that data was ethically gathered and protected and the participants were protected. Seventh is data analysis and interpretation. Justify how your data supports your theory and your research question. Demonstrate credibility through transparency. Be sure data is connected to the research question and supports the interpretive process. Avoid bias. 
and alternate data and discussion. The eighth step is the conclusion and implications. Summarize major research interpretations and how they link to your research questions. Note the possibilities for future research and possibly the limitations of your research. Next is the references and appendices and be sure that they are properly formatted. Revisions and edits. You will want to proofread your paper and be alert for such things as repetitiveness, using precise wording and language, avoiding passive voice, connecting with the audience by understanding their approach to your narrative, spell and grammar check. I suggest a read aloud. It's easier to hear mistakes than to see them sometimes. And if it's possible, have one of your peers review it. Be aware of the tale to be told and be sure your paper represents your research journey. And now for the discussion questions, I will have one discussion question from each chapter. Chapter 10. List some of the reasons a researcher might choose mixed methods research. Chapter 11. Discuss differences between coding and memoing. And chapter 12. What is the purpose of a literature review?